So, I've just hit the start recording and again, welcome to uh, lecture four in our demo university series. Today, we're going to have two things um, and those two sessions that we're going to have available for you, uh, we're going to have Penelope Pierce is going to be our guest demonstrator. So, Penelope is going to uh, get the opportunity to give you her demonstration and then you'll have the opportunity at the end to provide some constructive feedback. Uh, to Penelope and she'll give you a little bit of a background um, on what the, the demonstration's been or what the presentation's been constructed for. She talked a little bit about this last week and for those of you who weren't able to make it to last week's session, I believe last week's session should actually be up on the partner portal already. Um, if you go to the home page you'll see there is actually a link to the demo university where you can go and register but also on there, there is a link to all of the um, the previous week's sessions. So hopefully that's up there. If it's not, um, I'll go and double check after this session and, and make sure that if it's not up there, um, that it gets up there post haste. So Penelope's going to present and I'm also going to um, give you a little bit of an overview of something which is pretty exciting, which is the launch of our Acumatica implementation methodology. So I can see with my poll, everyone has um, everyone has voted. So I can see I've got 67% of you who are on this uh, on this session have attended all four of our demo universities. So that's great. Nobody's uh, taken advantage of the what's a demo university question. So um, I appreciate that and 33% of you have been at three. Uh, so that's good that, um, uh, that you've come back. I certainly appreciate it uh, and I'm going to continue to do my best to make sure that these are of value to you. But the secret to that, of course, is making sure that I get your feedback to know what are the key areas that you want to focus on. So with that, uh, Penelope, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to um, bear with me because I would like to maybe just spend five minutes or ten minutes at the start of the session just to go through um, the, the piece on our implementation methodology and I'll take no more than ten minutes okay, uh, to do that and then I'm going to hand across to you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show my screen. And so hopefully right now you should be able to see um, my screen with the Acumatica Empower implementation methodology screen on here. So those of you who've talked to me before will know that I love acronyms. I love acronyms because they make it so easy to remember things. People call them acronyms. Uh, it's also known as a mnemonic, M-N-E-M-O-N-I-C, a mnemonic. So it's a, it's a word that um, also reminds you of, uh, of what the word stands for. So Empower. What is Empower all about and why do we name the um, um, Okay, sorry, uh, let me just double check. I think people are having a bit of difficulty um, hearing me. Okay, are you still able to hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Good. I can hear you. All right, thanks. Um, so uh, what the Acumatica implementation methodology is all about, it's all about empowering people. It's all about empowering our customers to have successful implementations. It's empowering our partners to drive successful implementation. It's empowering all of us to minimize risk in a process because that's what a methodology is all about. And the steps in the Acumatica implementation methodology are very, very simple. You evaluate the customer's requirements. You map the solution to the customer's requirements. You build a plan as to how you're going to um, deploy those requirements. You operationalize that plan. You put it into a series of work packages. You execute against the work packages and then you come back at the end of it and you review what worked, what didn't work, what was successful, what wasn't. Now, why do we have uh, implementation methodology? Well, um, it's very, very clear that um, our customers believe that partners with proven repeatable practices and disciplines have highly um, have, or have a significant number of uh, uh, or significantly higher success rates with their implementations. 
Um, where are the issues though when there are challenges in implementations? Well, there's a couple of key areas. The first is there is, can sometimes be a breakdown in partner and client communications. Second is you have a challenge with milestones not being met. The third is you have an inability to meet customer requirements. And the fourth is you have poor change controls and contingency plans in place. So if you think about each one of these areas, they break down into a couple of key components, into project management, readiness management, and risk management. And you can see where the trends are from the studies that have been done on where the biggest issues are. And the biggest issues are in areas where a little bit of planning and a little bit of structure would have actually helped. All right, lack of planning, 39% failure. Milestones not being met, 34% failure. Breakdown in communications, 57% failure. And why do communications break down? Often it's because um, there isn't a communications process that's defined. So the Acumatic uh, implementation methodology, the Empower implementation methodology has been built to help address that. Each one of these things, there is a significant impact on business value that you encounter. So if you are trying to understand why you should have an implementation methodology, I think it's very, very clear. When people and processes break down, then you have challenges. You have challenges like disconnected stakeholders, insufficient input into the process. Teams, your project teams, don't understand the business problem or where they fit into the process of building and developing and deploying the solution. You have a vague project approach which isn't identified or not well understood by the customer. You have lists of requirements. Um, don't identify what the critical business objectives are or you have poor handoff from sales or the back-end production support team. So you can see the impact on the project success. You know, you've got critical needs go uncaptured, communications breakdowns occur, you know, most the biggest thing we ever hear about is that the solution can't be implemented as stated. Okay, you fail to deliver the relevant results of the back end. And, you know, it, things like lengthy delays in realizing the business value. And then people have to execute costly workarounds to try and meet those business demands. All this ends up resulting in um, a high level of dissatisfaction. So, that's what customers tell us. What are you telling, telling us as partners? Well, you tell us that methodologies matter to your business. You tell us that methodologies help you to build maturity of your processes uh, and helps you build a pro profitable service business. One of the other things is that we've seen by talking with some of our more successful partners is that they value process maturity around three key areas. So if you're thinking about what is the the methodology need to encompass. It needs to encompass this whole process about envisioning, selling and setting expectations. So if you think about it, this is the evaluation and the mapping process is in the Empower uh, methodology. Then you've got planning and design, laying out clear project roadmaps. This is, you know, the um, the, the, the next stage, the operationalizing, the building of work packages that are really clearly laid out and clearly aligned to roadmaps. And then you have the implementation around project management and collaboration. And this is around building your work packages and executing those work packages and having those work packages executed by the right people inside the organization and having a complete com collaboration framework around that. And that's where the review process comes in, right at, the, right at the end, but also to a certain extent, you could say that the review process is occurring consistently. But in the methodology, you really do need to have a formal a debriefing, a formal review process right at the end. So what we've done with the implementation methodology is we've built it, focused around these three specific areas. Now, I have a uh, couple of different presentations that I could talk about our implementation methodology for a number of hours, but I'm not going to do that. What I wanted to do was utilize this time to just give you a heads up that over the next month to two months, beginning with the Acumatica Summit, we're going to be rolling out this implementation methodology. And the methodology the Empower methodology is really about providing tools uh, 
and guidance that help you maintain control of all aspects of your Acumatica project. It's designed for you as a partner and for your clients so you can collaborate and work together to make sure you have successful deployments. And it consists of prescriptive guidance, tools and a series of templates and disciplines around the methodology, around the project life cycle and around the project management 10 step. Why? Because every successful project, it's clear that they follow a proven methodology that's focused on achieving project objectives. So this methodology is focused on, on providing you with everything you need to do that. Now, a special point to note, this methodology has been built together with um, one of our partners, Diane Grayson, and Diane has been working with us to help us put together this methodology and it's already being trialled and it's already in use with a number of partner organisations who are already testing and applying the methodology. The other important thing to remember, like any good methodology, you should be able to look at it, understand it and then choose which components you need and which components you don't. When you call a carpenter to come and do some work at your house or a handyman, he pulls up or she pulls up out the front in their truck, which is full of all these different tools. They come in, they look at the job, then they go out to the truck and they get the tools they need. They don't bring in every single tool that's in the truck. They know what tools they have, they know how to use them and when to use them and they just pick the ones they need to fulfill that particular task. The implementation methodology is designed the same way. It has the ability to be used in a very quick and rapid implementation just to provide some components to give you a framework. It also has the ability to be utilised in a big multi-year large scale implementation covering multiple business processes, covering multiple business divisions. So we're equipping you or we are hoping or attempting to equip you with what you need to take the capabilities in Acumatica and I've got to tell you every time I sit down with our software I find a whole bunch of new things that you can do with Acumatica uh, we're giving you a methodology that gives you the ability to take that, take those, those capabilities and deploy them quickly, effectively, on time, on budget and on scope. So that's what the methodology is all about. If you want to attend a full three-day training session and workshop on utilising the methodology, we do have Diane is going to be running um, a methodology workshop at the summit. So you know the summit starts off with two days of the summit itself and then we go into three days of training. So if you have identified that one of the key things you need in your organisation is a better methodology for doing your implementations, then I would encourage you to come along to that session. I think it's almost full. Um, I think we've got a couple of spaces left, maybe two or three spaces and we can extend out if we get a few more. Uh, we can add a few more people, but it is very much a hands-on workshop, so get on top of that as soon as possible. I'll be delivering additional training around this as well as we go through, uh, and of course there will be a complete set of e-learning which will be available to you around the methodology, where we'll take you through all of these different components and we'll explain to you how to use all of the tools and templates um, so that you can run an effective Acumatica implementation. So with that, Bear with me for a second, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to um, ask you if there are any questions that you have about the implementation methodology, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box or into the chat box and I will answer them at the end of the session but what I'd like to do right now is I'm going to pass uh, presenter rights across to Penelope, so bear with me for one second. You're there on the line, Penelope, I take it? Yes, you are. I see you're on mute. Yes, I'm yes, on I'm muted, muted now. now. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make you the presenter. All right, so you are now the presenter, Penelope. So if you want to go ahead and share your screen, um, we should be good to go. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Sure can. Perfect. Um, so I'd like to thank you first for this opportunity. I'm getting a little bit of feedback, um, but I will just keep uh, talking through it. Um, I would like to uh, just first of all set this up so that uh, people understand what type of a demo this might be because there can be various types depending on the type of client, depending on the market. Um, we have quite a few clients that are currently with um, another product, um, uh, Business Vision, and we are hoping to convert those, um, those uh, clients over to Acumatica. So this is basically geared towards that type of client that we would go in. Um, I'm going to take a few roles today because I don't have anybody with me today that would take the, the, the front end of this, but I would be working with other people so that when we went into the demo, um, uh, the first couple of slides would be done by a different person. Um, when we go into the actual Acumatica um, and I do the live demo, that would be done through a different roles. But today, because it's, uh, you know, we, we're a little tight for time, I'm going to take all the roles uh, for everywhere. So um, I will tell you when I'm switching roles. So we'll just begin it now. I would, I would uh, first of all, we would discuss with the client um, what their, their um, challenges are in today's world. And in today's business environment, you have to be concerned about your sales. Um, sales are the one of the most important things that a business must focus on, revenue streams. Uh, there is pressure on the company to retain their customers. Um, the customers can be unhappy with service they receive, they can be unhappy with the product deliverables, they can um, decide to use a competitor, competitor because of pricing or because of customer care. It, it's, you know, there's a, quite a bit of pressure on making sure that your customers remain happy. Um, we have noticed uh, that there needs to be faster delivery of solutions. And when I say that, customers in today's world, they want email notifications, immediate pricing, immediate availability of a product, bulletins on new products, that type of thing. And the company has to be concerned about their revenue stream and their scarce resources. So what that means is that they have to be very, very efficient with the use of their resources um, because that allows for more decision-making time and less manual time being spent on a task. Also, every company now needs speedy and accurate financial reporting and consolidations. Strong and accurate financial information is always available in real time working towards an 80-20 model. Uh, and the 80-20 model, in case people are not quite aware of that, 80% of your sales come from 20% of your clients. And the last thing is every company uh, wants rapid growth because that means they make you know, more revenues. Um, but really, can you afford to grow? What are your resources, your capabilities, your competencies, your strengths? Uh, are you making the right decisions with your marketing, your sales, and your pricing strategies? So having said that, today I am going to go to um, a live demo and I'm going to show you a product, uh, uh, Acumatica, which is, has high level features. We're going to show you a solution demonstration uh, featuring role tailor dashboards, a quote to cash through procurement to pay demonstration, and a few financial highlights. So what is Cloud ERP? Cloud ERP is an enterprise resource planning software that is hosted in a platform over the internet, uh, using the internet to access hardware, software, and other resources. It has many strengths, but um, some of the strengths that people are, are lo that love are connect using a window PC, a Mac, smartphone, or an iPad, and you can connect using any of these and, and in combination with each other. You can connect 24-7 from anywhere in the world using any standard internet browser. Any data or document can be sent via email anywhere in the world and at any time, which, which 
your clients want, your customers will want to know, it doesn't matter where you are, they want to know what's going on with their account. You can import and export files and records, easily moving from Excel or MS Word, which is um, a very, a very uh, strong point with Acumatica. A lot, a lot of systems can use the Excel uh, import export, but MS Word is difficult. So uh, now I'm going to move over to into the system. So the, the first thing um, I'd like to discuss are, are dashboards. So dashboard um, are a way of reporting information to the person within the role. So I am taking the uh, role for the uh, um, entire company right now because I'm in as the administrator. So I would be maybe looking at a dashboard for as the president, as the CEO. And that dashboard might have these types of, uh, of information on them. I made these up myself, so I'm just guessing that somebody would, uh, the president at that level would want to know the tasks that uh, everyone needs to do for him or her, prospects, uh, maybe an expense claim that they would have to sign, items to be approved, any business accounts that are ongoing, and also the trial balance. So any of these can be up, refreshed in uh, Acumatica. Very simply. Oh, I'm not logged in. Give me one second. I'm sorry, it, it, it timed out. Sorry about that, it timed out on me. So that is one type of dashboard, but before we get into uh, it right into the system, there's a few other types of dashboards that people might be interested in. So if I was in the role of perhaps the accounts payable person, I would be looking at different type of information. So in in uh, the in the case of the accounts payable, I might be interested in uh, invoices, vendors, uh, AP uh, recurring transactions, that type of thing. A dashboard can be um, built at any by any user. They're very, very friendly. Can be moved around, uh, made smaller, made bigger. And right now, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to show you how easy it is to build a dashboard. So you would go to your, I'm just going to do it on here. So you would pick some, somewhere where there was a dashboard uh, capability. And I'm going to add this as a chart. No, I, I'll add it as a table, but it could be added as a chart if you wish. And I'm going to select what type of a dashboard I want. So I want the vendor uh, ID. I want the name. Uh, I don't really need the last activity. Um, I don't need the cur currency in any way for this demo. So we're just going to take the currency out. But as you can see, it has a lot of strengths. You can put that in if you wish to. And if you're running in different currencies, it would show all of that. Um, it's, it's a vendor summary. I don't need the beginning, but I need the ending. The prepaid, I don't care too much about the period to date. So I'm going to take that off. And I'm just going to run it. So as simple as that, I have a dashboard. So I go back into my accounts payable, which is where I've built it. And I see it sitting here. I take it over here. And I can stretch it and put it anywhere I want to, but it's just that simple. And the, it's all user um, de defined and uh, user driven. So basically, um, I can do that anywhere. So I've got accounts receivable. I've got a few of them in there. President, uh, I have a few in distribution that I've made up. So that it was, it's just that simple. The other area, other than you can do these in chart and you can do these in table, the other area is you can also do them as a generic report. And I have built some generic reports. Um, this, this here, I'll just drill into it for you. So if you want to see the whole thing, I built this generic report and I put it onto the, um, uh, the navigation screen over here, and I dropped it into my Explorer, and I have it up for all time. So if I want to know my AR by due date at any given time, this was a very uh, simple report to make, and it, it will always be on my dashboard. Um, we do have other options available uh, within the dashboards. Um, and once again, I'd just like to briefly say each uh, user benefits from a unique user experience. For instance, when I log into my Acumatica, I see my dashboards. And when the president logs into his Acumatica, he sees his dashboards. So these dashboards are tailored to my needs. 
um, and they, were, they contain only what I want to see. So now I'm going to actually go in and tell you a little bit about Acumatica. So we can start with, um, sorry, we'll come back into the distribution here. So overall, once again, I'm going to play all of the roles today, but you will be only doing, you would only have the role that related to you. So if you're an AR person, a finance person, AR, you would have only uh, um, availability to those, those uh, programs that, uh, or those screens that relate to just you. So in this case here, I want to show you across here, we have different modules, and within those modules we have the sales orders, for instance, under distribution. So we have further drill down into, into other modules, and within the sales order all over here we have a navigation pane. So that navigation box is letting me do uh, my work area, so I can enter anything that I see here. Uh, when I go to process something, it, it'll flip over to here. And if I want to report of, uh, of something within this range of the uh, sales orders, uh, it would be this little box here. And this is my configure box, which probably only the administrator of your system would be working with. So today, I'm going to now just go through a, a quote to sales order first, and what I'm going to do to so that we can all stay on the same um, page here, is I have a little chart. So we're going to go from quote to cash. So we're going to start here, and we're going to go through to here, but this product doesn't have stock, so I'm just going to take a little sidebar and, and create a purchase order, receive the stock, and then put it into inventory, and then continue on to release it uh, through to general ledger. I will keep referring back to this chart so that you know where I'm, where I'm uh, at at the time. So right here. So my quote today, my customer is... I'm just going to put in, so I'm just whoops, adding a little bit of information here about what we're doing today. So my customer order is Demo 10, and all the information about this customer will remain Demo 10 as we go through this. And I am going to, they, have per, they want a quote on a product called REQ and we'll select 008. So I'm going to stop here for a second. So what you see here, this is just a quote. It has a lot of different um, drill down information that I can go to and take a look at about this quote and about the information regarding this, cu this uh, customer here. So right now we uh, are just going to perhaps email this to this customer. So this begins a little bit of communication with the customer. We're going to email it uh, out to them and then wait. So we'll just assume that the customer has come back a couple of days later and said, yeah, this is all okay. Oh, sorry, you know what? I missed my quantity in my, sorry, you're getting it for free. I don't think so. Sorry about that. So. The customer, now we'll just back up. So the customer has received the quote, and now they're saying it's all okay, except I'm not paying $15. I've only paid $14. So I now make a decision to change this to a sales order. So where it says recalculate unit prices, I have an opportunity here to say don't recalculate the unit price. Or which would leave it at the $15, or please, I, I need an opportunity to, to change this to another number. So it will now go ahead and change this over to a sales order. And it's given me a zero unit price. So I'm going to put in $14, because that's what the customer and I agreed on. The other thing that it's done is it's telling me that I need inventory. So I, I don't have enough inventory available. I have a zero inventory available. So in my sales order, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put out my purchase order against this. Now once again, 
this once I put out this purchase order, this would flip over to a um, another role, which would be the purchasing agent. So I will let you know. You'll see it flip, and then that would be a, a secondary person coming in and uh, doing something with this. So what I want to do is create a purchase order. Why didn't it do that? I canceled it. Did I hit something? I'm sorry. I must have hit something. Okay, I'm going to do this again. I must have canceled the order. My apologies. I must have hit it. All right, so I'm back where I was, and I have nothing available, so I'm putting, I'm going back to that purchase order. That wasn't the system; that was me. I must have hit the the cancel in, in haste, or it didn't go, didn't go where it was supposed to go. So now I am going to see. I hit here. I should have hit here. Uh, my apologies. So it has now gone over to create the purchase order. And I look at it, and it all seems fine to me. I don't see anything that I should be worried about. The, the 10 is fine. I'm going to go to my vendor. I happen to know who this vendor is. So I will go to my vendor and uh, just help uh, as a purchasing agent. I'm going to say I'm going to place my order with D. Brown. And taking a look around, 10 is fine. I'm going to just process it. So there's the purchase order in place. Just going to say this is demo 11. The vendor reference will be demo 11. Save it. So now I have a few choices here. First of all, I can take a look at uh, any of the implications, the tax, the shipping instructions. I can override them. I can make changes. I can um, decide to, to uh, put it out through a different courier. Um, I have vendor information in case I need to know something because this is going to go to accounts payable. Um, and any other information that relates to this, or this purchase order. And I have action buttons now and inquiry buttons here. So I can look at my vendor details at this point. I can take a look at um, printing the purchase order, which I'll just maybe just show you. The purchase order is there. So I have a few options. So what I'd like to do now, though, is I'm going to uh, receive this. So I'm now going to pretend that I'm the receiver and they are, they've are they logged into their role and they see that the uh, product is ready to be received. So my action now is to take it off of hold. I'm pending approval and I approve or the purchase or, or the purchasing agent. Whoever has that, whoever has that um, authority within your company. So now it has been approved. I've emailed the purchase order back out to the vendor, and I'm now going to receive it. So the, the actual inventory will be received. So as you can see, it has flipped over. Now, I am doing all of this in one place, but within Acumatica, of course, you can do it. The sales order could be done here. The purchase order could be done here. It doesn't have to be uh, done in one place, but one of the strengths is that it can be done in one place. So that is a choice of how your workflow um, is, is being handled within your company. So now, it has been received, but it's on hold. I have to check it out. So my vendor reference, first of all, I need to put that in. I need to. I have received ten, so that is my control quantity. Now I'll take it off hold as the person that's got the authority to do that, 
and I'm going to release this. So you can see down here when I released it, what, what happened is I actually received those 10 into my system. So I am able now to continue with my sales order. So if I go back to here just to see what other information I might want to see here, um, these reports I can print my purchase receipts, I can view my purchase receipt billing history. Um, that type of information can be left electronically, it stays there forever. So now I'm going to go back to my sales order that was open. for this company and, and lucky it came back up again and I'm going to continue now so we're going to go back to here so what I have done is I've gone through the sales quote I've, I've created a sales order I had no stock I created a purchase order I received the stock and I'm back at my sales order so I'm going to get my shipping documents out there so I go to my action and I'm going to create my shipment. Now, the person that per put the sales order in would not do that. They, they, the shipping, the shipper receiver type person would have another role and they would see that, that, that everything was ready to go. So they would create the shipment, pull it out of the warehouse, which I can see at any given time. And I like to point out at anywhere that you see a blue um, uh, piece of information, you can drill into that. That's your drill down box. That's your capability to see any, anything that has happened with this, uh, within the transaction that you're putting through. So now I've got this, this shipment. It's, all, it's open um, and it's been issued, but it's not ready to go yet. So the next action would be I took a look at it. It looks fine to me. I don't think I have any information. I think everything is going to go. Here's the order. I've drilled into it. It's all fine. The, the uh, client has been, the customer has been uh, notified via email that everything is ready to come and so has the, um, the shipper, um, UPS or Perlator or, or if you're using a transportation company. And if I needed to ha have put in any packages, I would have seen this here. So right now, I am now going to confirm my shipment and at this point I can print my labels or if I uh, think that it might be coming back I can send which um, a computer company like Dell does they send return envelopes so does Apple uh, so I can do that right now if I want to and now I'm going to confirm my shipment so as you can see over here it changed so I have my confirmation and everything is ready to, to, uh, to go. So now that I have all of my documentation, I've printed my pick list, I've got my shipping confirmations, all of those things were available as I was going through this process. Once again, back to the role, the person that would be interested in that would be the person that was, was, had the role at that time as the shipper receiver. Um, so I'm going to go back now and I'm going to update my inventory first. So it, that shipment has been confirmed and what will happen now is down here my availability has been decreased to zero because the 10 that I just received has been assigned to this purchase order. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to prepare my invoice. You can do this over in the finance accounts receivable section, another role. I'm going to do it from here. And you'll notice over here that it will switch to uh, invoices in a second. So that is finished. So what we have now is everything is ready to be paid. So we're just going to leave it and close it and go back over to finance because it wouldn't be done in the same place. You'll get your cash three, four weeks later if you're lucky. And um, so the, the invoice number 1123, for this customer needs to be released.
Whoops, sorry. I've lost it. Okay, hold on. Uh, sorry, I will find it in one second. So, going back to finance, going back to accounts receivable. So my invoice is here. I think potentially when you um, when you moved off the invoice screen, um, you didn't actually it didn't actually save it. I didn't I save, save it. it. Penelope. Okay. 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 So I just go back to your uh, go back to your sales order and make sure that's been converted into the invoice still. So call up your original sales order. Yep. Yep, yep right, here. right here. And and then go to your actions. Okay, so there it is, and I didn't save it here. Bad girl. And sorry, I'm going to release it again. Sorry about that. I'm going too fast, maybe. Okay. okay, so now so I'm going to go back to finance. finance. It should be there now. One, one, two, three. My fault for that. All right, so it is here and it has been released and I'm just going to now, I have received the money, I can send email the, uh, the invoice or the memo to the customer, I can send an email, at this point I can reverse it if I need to and I can write it off if the customer said I'm not paying it. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to enter my payment because I have received the uh, $135 here and it looks fine to me. I'm just going to put a reference in here. And I look around. It looks okay. I've accepted the $135.80. So I'm going to release that. And in this case, what it means is I'm matching my open invoice to my cash received and it will hit the bank. So just to take a look at what has happened here is we went to um, the account details and I'm going to go to the accounts receivable account. To the AR account. And it's at the end. And here you see demo 11, and I can double click on this to see what, where it hit in, within the general ledger, went to sales, went, went to AR, and within the accounts payable, when we close the, the uh, purchase order, go to our vendor details, and the vendor was uh, D Brown. and that's been closed also. So we are now waiting for the checks and the payments, uh, which I won't go through because it starts to take up a lot of time, but checks and payments, um, you get to you select it in the same manner, and um, all of these actions throughout the whole system are always available. You've got your, your inquiry, you can take a look at all your reports, um, uh, your edit detail, your document register, and your payment register. Now the only two other things that I'm just going to mention very quickly is that this, uh, the Acumatica has a couple of different things that are um, unique, I would say, uh, to 
what you're used to seeing, a cash management, your cash flow forecast, very powerful in, uh, in, this, in this system. You get to include your unreleased documents, your unapplied, anything that's been scheduled, and you can run a report. So, so some systems don't show you everything all at the same time, but Acumatica does. And you can get a report and send it to someone. You can uh, send it over to the controller. You can send it to ask questions about it. You can attach something to it and, and, uh, and query it. So that's, that's a strength. And the other thing is budgeting. So the budgeting in, in Acumatica is, it allows you to do an accepted budget, which is your current budget. So I will show you that. So your current budget here, but it also has something called an optimistic budget and a pessimistic budget. So what that allows you to do is to have a flexible budget um, and use one of the budgets as a projection. So a very, very strong features. Okay. So I'd like to thank you on behalf of Evron, your goal partner today, and would like to leave this uh, with you as a thought. Uh, unlock your business potential with Acumatica. Thank you for your time. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Penelope. Um, and uh, I thought that was a, a great demonstration. So a uh, round of applause for you from the audience. Um, so now what we'll do is um, we'll open up for um, for some feedback, and I'm going to lead by example again, um, as I always like to do. Um, so what I'm going to do, the way I like to give feedback, is to talk about what um, what I liked, what I thought we could take away as a best practice, um, what I thought might might be a little bit um, might be a little bit better, um, or what you could do that would, might give you that extra two percent. That's one of the things I always like to talk about. What could I do two percent better that would be enough to maybe kick me over the line? Um, and make me the winner in the demo stakes rather than um, coming second. So, what I really liked, can you, um, can you go back to your Excel spreadsheet for me? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, one second, one second here. here. There we go. I really like the way you use this Excel spreadsheet because one of the things that we teach in our demo to win training is a, tech, is a methodology called Tell, Show, Tell. Um, and sometimes, particularly when you're trying to go pretty fast, and, and you were going pretty fast, which is I know, which is kind of okay. Is it too long? Okay, um, I'm, I'm just watching the clock. Just, no, well, again, practice makes perfect, right? And think about it: how much time do I have, and how much do I need to show, and am I going to run out of time before I've shown everything that I need to? And I got to tell you, um, I am. Um, I'm guilty of this, uh, guilty as charged on a regular basis of, of not timing myself correctly. So it's, it's not an easy thing to do. But I think I, I was able to follow, but just bear in mind when you are presenting remotely as well, sometimes the screen can't keep up with you. So how quickly you're speaking and the screen's refreshing, sometimes it does tend to fall a little bit behind. But I really like this. Now, did you know, Penelope, and maybe you already did, but did you know you could actually rather than just toggling backwards and forwards between Excel and Acumatica, you could actually click on the, the, um, the area inside Excel and have it automatically launch that function in Acumatica? No, no I, didn't. I didn't. How do you do that? Okay, great question. So let's go back to Acumatica. Okay. okay. So go into your sales order screen. Okay, so now up on help, up in the top right hand corner. This one? This, one? this help? Uh, no, across in the actual sales order screen. Okay. Right. Over there, Nick, under where it's got admin, yeah, that's it. Okay. See there you can say get link? Yes. If you choose oh. get link. Um, what you'll see is that will then give you an external link. So if you copy that link, oh. okay, so select it and copy it. This, um, hold on, hold on. When you say so, so see where it says, mm -hmm. yep, that's it. Now do a control C to copy that. Or right click yes. and say copy. And now go back into Excel. Yes. 
and then select the area or select the one that you want. So your sales order, right click on where it says sales order. So oh, wow. right click. I'll do it on the quote because I would start on the quote. Okay, all right. Okay. So yes. right click on there and get, go down the hyperlink, down the bottom. Okay. Yep, choose that. Yes, yes. just click. Yep. And then in the address, just do a paste. In here? Down the bottom, right down oh, the bottom. In here. So it says address, yep. Got it. Do a paste it. and then say OK. Oh. And so now what will happen when you click on that field, try it. In, okay, in here, in here or in which, which way? way? No, so sit, hit close there, go and now go back to Excel. Okay. And then click on sales quote. Okay. What it's going to do is it's going to take oh, you into Acumatica. Okay, hold on, I timed out. Shoot. And it's going to take you not only to that screen, but it's going to take you to that exact sales order. Oh, oh this, this is, is very, very clever. clever. Okay, okay, now okay. the other thing you can do um, is if you just want it to take you to a screen, then um, you don't don't need to to have the sales order selected. Now, so now, yep. if I wanted to if I wanted to to get better at this, where would I where would my help functions be for me to read on this? Um, that's a really great question. Um, somebody showed that to me just the same as I've showed it to you, okay. uh, and um, I would imagine uh, anybody else feel free to chime in. Um, you know, it's, it's in the documentation. So one of the things that and people kind of laugh at me, I go home at night and what do I do? I crack open a copy of Acumatica and I start poking around with it. And that's how I learn a lot of stuff. Yeah, um, me too, because, because I, I, haven't I haven't done a lot, lot of this. Like, I, yep. like, 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 like I've, I've done, done uh, I've got, I've got the business, business uh, consulting, consulting, but I don't have the distribution uh, yep. yet. Yep. Well, even this. I mean, this is just it's kind of standard nice. okay. Acumatica functionality. So you could yes. you could do that, but see up in your address bar up the top there. Okay. okay. He's got. Uh, uh, Graham, Graham is giving, is giving, us, giving us, something. us something. Okay. It's Hang on a second. Is part of the Acumatic is built for the web thing. Okay. 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 So where? Oh, so, so Graham, Graham uh, where, would where would I find like if I wanted to just take my time and learn how to really do that and all of the bells and whistles? Where would I find that? And I think Graham's just chatting in the mm -hmm. chat window directly with you. So, okay. for, for me, I found that um, as part of the uh, Dryas the Sahara of Doug Hudson's wonderful presentation in Seattle earlier in this year. Um, okay. He just, just went, went through, through as he was giving an overview of the and he was stressing the concept, the thing that makes us an attack. It's a okay. thing all the way. And because so of that, that the, everything is a URL and then gave us those tips. And of course, so did, it's looking at did your you, uh, graph bar. Did you, uh, Graham, did you get like a handout that you could uh, scan over to me? Uh, no, not really. Okay. It was just okay. part of... Um, the overall presentation of how Acumatica is very different. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So nice. one of the other things, um, are, have you guys seen the new um, how to navigate Acumatica e-learning that Valerie Hill put together? I haven't looked at it. Okay, so um, again, I would recommend to you that you jump onto the Acumatica YouTube channel. But what I'm okay, going to okay. do as a follow-up uh, when we post the recording of this week's demo university, um, as a um, as a uh, additional resource, there I'll also post the link to where you can go and you can watch Valerie's session, because okay, there's okay. a whole bunch of great hints. And as Graham said, you can. I mean, anything. Acumatica is a giant website, so and all the pages are all giant web pages. So anything you can do on a web page, you can do on an Acumatica page. Matter of fact, I was here with um, Express Information Systems, even showing them how to embed YouTube training videos into the standard screens. So you could, you know, embed um, embed a training video explaining to somebody how to do. Um, how to do something. And Carlos um, Ibarra has just posted a link to um, to Valerie's presentation. So if you go and you look down in the chat area, 
um, you'll find uh, you'll find that, that that link is there. But I'll also post it for everybody uh, along with the recording from today's session. So I Thank really you. I really like the way you used that um, that Excel spreadsheet and you did that tell show tell. What I also liked was how you didn't get flustered when something didn't quite go right. Sometimes <laughs> you can end up like a deer in the headlights. Um, <laughs> And all you've got to do is take a deep breath, and it seems like every second that ticks by feels like a minute, uh, but it's not. So I really liked how you um, how you recovered from that really, really quickly. One yeah, thing. Thank God, thank God <laughs> for my mother's tap dancing, dancing classes. <laughs> 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 Always ha helps. The more of these you practice, the the better you get at tap dancing. Um, one of the things that I thought could have made it just a little bit better. Um, okay. As you were going through some of these things, um, I think there were some business benefit statements that you could have dropped in as you explained some of these things. So okay. you explained exactly what it did, but sometimes not everybody can make the connection between what you just showed them and a business benefit. So, could, you, could you just could give you me just like one, ex one example? One example? Well, yeah, absolutely. So, for example, when you showed, you were actually showing the sales order to purchase order link. Yes. But then there's a demo crime that we talk about in Demo to Win, and it's called the So What Demo Crime. What okay. you said was exactly right, but I'm you kind of your audience is kind of going, well, so what? Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. to prevent them from doing that, and often it's not it's not your fault. It's just the way people process information. One of the things that you can do is you can give them a statement behind that and say, you know, one of the things that can really be helpful is, you know, the ability when you're doing a sales order to speed up the entire end-to-end -end process and improve customer satisfaction by being able to fulfill more quickly by linking your sales order to your purchase order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how quick and easy it is and how with just three clicks of the mouse button, you can take that out of stock situation which can potentially lead to a customer dissatisfaction issue and you can um, you know, quickly turn that around and fulfill the customer's order quickly and, and keep them happy. Okay, okay so, you so you pulled, pulled it back it. to my opening with the revenue streams. Yes, correct. Okay, got so it. So you can't always remember that you can't always remember that they're going to tie it back to that. And one of the things that that's what you want to kind of do that that tell show tell. You can even tie it back to that. Okay. 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 Um, and as Warren Warren was just saying there, you know, as well, would there be a benefit in logging out and logging in with another role? Yep, and that's it. I don't that's have the point. speed. I, I agree with him completely. I don't I have the speed on my machine. machine. You see, it's quite, quite slow, slow already. already. All right. So again, so that's why don't, I thought, yeah. don't forget that I can set you up with access to um, an Acumatica system in the cloud if you want to. Um, go and have a look at, at www.smecloudrp.com slash Acumatica. Okay, Test S that. S oh, SME. SME. Yep. Say it again. Yep. I'll put it into the, to the chat window for you. Hang on a second. Okay. Okay. Um, because that, so that would be perfect, because I, I do, I have a demo have next, next week where I'm going to be integrating with the Jazz, jazz. Yep. And, I'm and, really, really, and I'm really slow, slow on my side. side. Yep, okay, so just bear with me for a second, I'm just going to take back presenter rights, uh, make presenter, all right, and so now um, if you go to HTTP, and again, you can find this on the first page in the partner portal as well. I always hate saying, go to the partner portal. Um, okay. But if you, what one of the things we're trying to do is every time we've got something new that's going to be helpful for you, we try and put it on the first page of the partner portal. So um, you can find all of those most recent and most up-to-date things there on the partner portal. So if you go to this URL, Okay, and there it is, um, and test that out. See how it goes in terms of speed, uh, and if needs be, I can set you up your own dedicated area on that, your own, um, your own demo database. I will do it for sure. Okay, and if you're wondering what the username and password is, well, it's actually on the splash screen. I actually put it in as a comment there. And you could, or everybody that's on the call, feel free to share that link with, uh, with prospects um, so they can go and have a play around with the Acumatica system. But Okay, so it's a sandbox. Yes. Okay. Oh, so okay. Th there's a big but. Just like me, there's a big but. Um, <laughs> and the big but is make sure you've given them a bit of a walk through Acumatica first or at least sent them 
that uh, video that Carlos just shared the link for, for Valerie's session, which explains to you how to navigate your way around Acumatica. Okay. Otherwise, potentially, you'll dump them onto that site. They won't know where to go, what to look at, um, and potentially their first experience could be a bad one. Okay. 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 So well, we'll look them tight, right? right? Like, yeah. like, like, like I, I just I stayed within, within the one little stream. stream I could have gone, on the, you know, other, other places, places, but I, I thought, thought that that would lose the audience. The audience. Yeah. So, yeah. We, so we would keep them in that little in that little tight area in the beginning. Yeah, it's probably not a bad idea, but the you know the idea there is when once you give them access to the system, they can go wherever they like. Okay. okay. So the main thing you need to do is just make sure they know how to navigate. Acumatica okay, okay. is relatively simple. If you know something about accounting, and you know how to navigate the user interface, you'll usually be in pretty good shape. Okay. okay. So I, 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 you know, I really liked a couple of those things, a couple of minor changes, you know, just around the business benefits. Um, yeah, that I, I understand. Make. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I then understand. apart from that, 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 that okay. okay. Apart from that, I'd give you a ten out of ten. Uh, now, okay. tell, uh, tell me, Penelope, have you got your sales engineer badge? Uh, no, I, I don't. don't. Would you like to give it to me? <laughs> well, right now, what you have just qualified for is your mock demo. Okay. Okay. okay so I'm going to make a note that in your, um, in your uh, certification process that you have qualified for your mock demo. Okay. Um, so to everybody else who's on the session, if you want to also get your sales engineer badge and part of that is to do a mock demo, then please drop me an email uh, and volunteer to do uh, a presentation just as Penelope's done this week. Uh, you'll have the same opportunity. So. With that, we're now at uh, just a couple of minutes past the hour, so we're just over a little bit. So, any other feedback from anyone? Hi, this is Cliff. I think you did a great job, Penelope. One thing I, I love to see in there, I think that I've got it too, is if there's a way to incorporate Acumatica messaging, for instance, empower your people where you are showing on every device, so you can put those taglines in there and kind of. Uh, Consistent message going through, and you also have one where you would use page your strength. Other than that, it's really nice. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank and, you. And don't forget, you can get those standard PowerPoints again and get a lesson on how to use those messages and that messaging. Once again, go to the partner portal on the first, very first page you get okay. when you log in. You'll see down there there is a link that it says PowerPoint, PowerPoint um, and positioning. And there's two little training okay, sessions okay. and uh, a link to where you can get the positioning document and the PowerPoint. Okay. So this with that, um, I would say to you, thank you very much. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, again, if you would like to be one of our presenters, please let me know. Next week's session, uh, what I'm going to do is next week's session, I'm going to focus on Office 365 integration. And I'm going to show you how you can do a demonstration that pulls together the best of Acumatica with the best of Office 365, show you how you can tell a complete end-to-end -end story that blends Acumatica, Office 365, SharePoint together um, and shows a complete uh, integrated solution picture. Super. So with that, everyone, I'd like to thank yep. everyone for giving me this opportunity and and sticking with me to to my not, not saving. I had a note to myself and that didn't work. So, you know, that, my, that's my okay. Problem. Everybody forgets at least one thing during a demonstration. It's how you recover that makes the difference. Um, so with that, thank you everybody. I'm going to hit stop recording and I'll see you all same bat time, same bat channel next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.